so all of us know vital as vital from vital pachisi and uh, i think i was talking to faruk or faruk i think i so he did put up a poster of vital and i was like i am not going to talk about vital <laughs> i'm going to talk about vital and but i thought it would be nicer introduction to begin with uh, vital and then move on to vital which i think is a <clears throat> interesting way to move on to so i do have a presentation with lots of interesting pictures which i will share with you uh, uh and a lot of these pictures one are clicked by me two i have taken some pictures of rajan parikar but other than uh rajan parikar's pictures in my pictures i do not know of anyone who has been uh, documenting the vital's uh, images from goa so even online i don't think you will find anyone else than uh, uh two names i mentioned so let me begin with betal pachisi since a lot of us are aware of uh, betal and vikram and uh, uh vikram betal especially so we can look from there and then we can go move to goa from the betal to the vital so god now firstly i'm calling them guardians of goa and you will very soon see why are they guardians of goa do they have so many shrines that and what do they do i have put that uh, uh, visual just because uh, i remember in 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 the dd national uh, vital he used to disappear like this you know like a casper so i thought maybe i'll just put that visual uh, in in the presentation so the stories what are the stories of vital um we will look into the stories of vital first and uh, two stories what are these stories that we know of of uh, uh, vital one thing before i begin uh, by my presentation there are lots of images are placed on the right side right side of the presentation and i mentioned the place where they belong to <coughs> because i don't think i can take you to all of these so i put them in the presentation so we can maybe come back with them again later the stories of betal one of the very famous stories we all know is betal pachisi which is uh, also known as betala pancha vimashati in sanskrit and betal pachisi in hindi which are technically 24 stories of sub parts of a main story that is like an arabian night that runs throughout from a distant past about uh, the king vikramaditya and and vita now this particular story was written in the pisachi language when we talk about pisachi language it's a language that is lost now uh it was a language that could have been spoken around 3rd century bce to 6th century around that time and uh, later it is it is believed that the the linguists believe that it got incorporated with pali language and it evolved into the konkani that is spoken in the western ghats however <coughs> this particular language pisachi language was considered language of the ghost and since it was language of the ghost pisach means ghost it was considered something lowly something lesser because of which it 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 led into the degeneration of the of the language one of the important story of of from the uh, from vital is the brihat katha which is lost now we do not have this text which us this is the first time in which vikram and vital are introduced in this particular story in the brihat katha which does not survive any more what survives with us is the katha sarita sagar which is ocean of the streams of stories <coughs> uh believed to be composed in 11th century by the kashmiri uh, scholar somadeva written retold in sanskrit the story of vikram and vital and this is the story which we know about which we had seen in the 80s and the 90s when doordarshan was broadcasting uh 
uh, Vikram Vetal stories, which is the story begins with Vikram Aditya going into the forest and trying to bring capture this Vetal who lives on the trees. And this Vetal spirit, he captures him, he carries him on his shoulders, and he's supposed to take it um, to, to the tantric. He's supposed to take it to the priest. And uh, every time uh, the story ends with uh, Vital uh, reciting a story and giving Vikramaditya a riddle. That's how each story ended. <coughs> and uh, this is the story which all of us know. And this is our exposure to Vital. This is where from I will take further. What more do I want to talk about the Vitals that I came across in my journey in Goa? <coughs> now, the Vetal that we see in, in this uh, uh, stories uh, of Vikram Aditya, and is this Vetal one and the same thing? Uh, in a way, yes. In a way, no. In a way, yes, because yes, the Vetal is the one who is a spirit who lives on trees, who haunts cremate, uh, cremation grounds, or who lives in forest. He lives in isolated spaces. And he can be mischievous, I won't use the word mischievous, but he, is, I won't say he's also exactly very kind or unkind. There's something interesting about Vital, which I'll come about this. Is he kind? Is he unkind? What exactly he is? But <clears throat> in a clear cut way, he's not just a good spirit. He's not just an evil spirit. The moment we talk about the duality, that duality is not existing here. So we can say he's neither a good spirit, he's neither an evil spirit, he's beyond the both. He's beyond the both. So this all that we know about Vetal is right, yes. <coughs> this is that Vetal that we are also talking about, who lives in trees like tamarind, banyan, people, and wild trees. Is it only Vetal who lives in these trees? Or are there other such spirits and deities also? Well, yes, there are other such deities also, which are known as Maru, Jyoting, Devtsar. Maru, Jyoting, Devtsar, Paik, Dad. These are all different kinds of forest deities, which do also have shrines in Goa. The only thing is, Vetal is the host or the king. I won't use the word king again. King is not the right word. But he's a host. He's the chief of all these spirits who are who also exist and these spirits are supposed to believe to be living <coughs> in water in trees in isolated parts in forest on certain turns and these are one of the largest reasons why there are so many folk stories that you should not go on certain time at certain places under this tree near this water body or near this turn on the road because accidents happen or, or there is a spirit who haunts this place. Exactly. These are, the, these are those spirits which, which inhabit these places and one is avoided to <coughs> go near these places. You, some of you must have heard uh, that, uh, you know, in your childhood, some of you probably uh, who are now in the 40s or 50s, you would have been told in your earlier days, like do not go under the banyan tree or the people tree in the, in the night. So, banyan tree, peepal tree, odumbar tree, these are trees which are really fig tree, which are believed to be the host of such uh, animistic spirits. Who are the worshippers of these, of these, of Vitals and these spirits then and now? Well, the Austric tribes like the Gaudas, the Mundas, Sabras, these are the people who still live in Goa, like Vilips, like Mun, Gun, uh, like uh, the, the, the Gaudas, these are the people who still worship Vital. What's interesting today is Vital today, this image which you look, <coughs> the stone body is definitely very animistic tribal, but the clothing is certainly not tribal. The clothing looks very Brahmanical and with Tulsi leaves and Safa flowers. Yes, that's exactly what has happened. So today Vital is being worshipped by the tribals as well as by the Brahmin caste in Goa. And therefore he's become a deity who has much many more following now. So when did that happen in the historical time? We'll also come to that. 
when was it that Vedanta started being to be worshipped by the Brahmin community? So the incorporation of him in the Sanskritic tradition, we'll come to that also. So who exactly is, is this Vital that we're talking about? Well, Vital is a servant of Kali Mata, <coughs> as, and he's as ancient as time. What's interesting about Vital is what I was talking, no, he's neither evil, neither uh, good spirit. He's not bound by any moralities or social rules, like you and me, who we, we do have the notion of what is right and what is wrong. He does not have a notion of that. He doesn't fit in the world where morality is part. At the end of the day, morality is also a social construct because what may be moral to me may be immoral to you, except for, uh, I think only the one thing which all of us can agree, hopefully, hopefully I'm using the word, is that killing someone is an act of immorality. But other than that, if you talk about anything else, there's always a debate it may be moral, it may be immoral, except for the act of killing. And I'm sure there are people who will justify also killing by certain uh, preconditions, anyway. So he possesses great wisdom uh, and he lives on the threshold of life and death. So uh, he's someone who lives in the this, in this space of twilight. And because he lives in the space of twilight, he can look in the past and he can look into the future as well as he's in the present. So this is one DT who knows the past, who can look into the future and who can, <coughs> who is also in the present. He is also the son of Shiva, according to the Kalika Puran. According to the Kalika Puran, he is the son of Shiva and his elder brother is the is Bhairava, so who is also a son of Shiva and Ganga. And his other brother could be Murugan, who is also the son of Shiva and Ganga. This is all as per the Kalika Puran, which talks about the birth of, of Vital. So <clears throat> the birth of Vital is uh, uh, when uh, Shiva dropped three drops of semen. Uh, they were very, very potent and powerful drops and the goddess fire, uh, the goddess of fire consumed that, but the goddess was unable to consume because it was, it was so potent and so powerful. So they were dropped into the water and the water was Deva Ganga. So therefore, Vital is the son of Shiva in Ganga, just like uh, uh, Muruga is a son of Shiva and Ganga from the second drop and the third drop being uh, uh, Bhairava. So these three are brothers <coughs> and the son and the father is Shiva and the mother is uh, Ganga. This is the story from the Kalika Pura. Other than that, you might have folk stories of Vitala's birth. Uh, and one of the stories which I came across through folklore was that uh, when uh, Sati jumped into the fire and immolated herself and Shiva was ravaged and he was, he was hurt and he was destroyed when he saw that. So uh, he was angry, one was he was angry and two, he, he tore a, 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 a head, a, a lock of his mated hair and he put it into that fire and from that fire was born Vital. So this is another folk story <coughs> that I came across with the birth of uh, Vital. And this is the Vital which you see on your right hand side from Chopre, uh, Chopre in, in Goa, which is the, now you must be wondering what the temple looks like. This is the example of one of the temples of, of Vital. For those who are um, unaware of, of these kind of temples, yes, the Govan temples do look like this. Um, they're not the very big ones, but the smaller temples look like, these are not actually small. <laughs> these are huge temples, but this is the typical architecture of, of, the, of the Govan temple. So with the thatch roofs. So this is a temple of Vital in Priol, and uh, the 
this is the Veda that is inside this temple. So uh, this is an example of, 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 of the interior. And uh, <clears throat> this particular Vetal is wearing a brass mask. There are these special brass, uh, brass masks, uh, which are there for these uh, uh, body, which is made from uh, basalt rock or basalt stone, black basalt. Um, if you look at the hand carefully in, in this particular image, in the previous image, uh, yeah. Uh, so the sword is always most often missing because the statues are made in such a way more often uh, where, the sword, where the sword could be given in the hand separately of, of Vetar. Uh, this Tulsi Mala, which is also where or Rudraksh Mala is, a, <coughs> is an addition of the temple because what he holds is a, is a, is a, is a Patra, which is a which is uh, um, a pot's hurt, a pot which, which holds wine, which holds wine. So like here. So he holds a pot and the sword is usually added separately to most of the sculptures. Very few of them have uh, uh, their own uh, uh, this. So is he a variant of Virabhadra? Okay, I will come to this question also. Interesting question. I will come to it. I will come to it. Is he a variant of Virabhadra? Uh, that's a very interesting question though. So, okay. <clears throat> so this is how the way, I, you know, I will compare, uh, you know, when we are doing the iconography, uh, some of you already must have started deciphering the iconography, but when you're doing the iconography part, we will look, is he closer to, depiction of Veerbhadra or, or Kal Bhairav. We will look into that also. The etymology of the, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, what does he protect? And uh, what is he a deity of? So one is, uh, <coughs> he is a deity of, one is cattle, certainly. He is worshiped as a cow god, who is a father and protector of cows. Now you would wonder again, where is cows and what's the relationship? Well, the cow relationship only comes again from Kalika Puran in chapter 93. Uh, it is uh, a story where Vetal falls in love with Kam Dhenu, the wish fulfilling cow. And Vetal and Kam Dhenu have a son. The son born of this union is Nandi, who later becomes the worshipper of who is also the, who serves his grandfather. So Nandi is the grandson and Shiva is a grandfather. So this is the story mentioned in Kalika Puran. And therefore the cattle tribes or the people who take care of cattle are again people who worship Vedal in many parts of India, <coughs> uh, including the one temple of Vedal at the Vedal Tekri in Pune. There's something which I didn't mention, I'll mention right now. So you must be wondering <coughs> how many sites of Vital must be there and why, you know, right now I've actually shown you some five great uh, uh, statues or sculptures of Vital and they are, they are, they are really uh, intriguing. Mm, the question is, how is Vital, where is Vital worshipped in India? From what I know and from what the sources are there historically mentioned, the sites of Vital in all over India would probably, I'm talking about sculptures, huh? not the aniconic ones, I'm talking about sculptures. The sculptures would be across 10 to 15, possibly from what has been recorded in India. But what is so shocking and surprising about just a small state like Goa, is that you have around roughly 40 to 45 sites of Vital, which has culture. And that's really surprising. A small state like Goa has 45 sculptures or sites of Vital, when all over India, the records are roughly about 10. So, he is worshipped in an iconic form. 
but we are not getting into an iconic form at the moment. So we're talking just about sculptures and iconic forms you will find like a stone or something also. So if I take that, then there'll be many more sites in Goa, but I'm just speaking about the, the sculptural sites. And that makes Goa a very, very uh, historical, cultural, iconic place to discuss Vetal. Why Vetal in Goa and how? <coughs> and how? Okay. Um, so one is he is a deity of cattle, two, he is a deity of, uh, but he is a one who protects from storms. So he's a destroyer of storms. So, which is one of the reasons why uh, people who are into uh, marine and fishery and anything to do with the sea or sailing also worship Peta too. And three, he is a Gram Daiva, which is he is the protector of, of uh, he's a protector of uh, property and, and village. So he is a deity of all of these things. <clears throat> we will come to the iconography now. And uh, I hope I've not missed any slide. Okay, I missed this slide, the etymology. Yes. Uh, the etymology of, of Vital is one is Tal and, Vil, and Vilayati. Now Tal is something we all know Tal, the Tal of the rhythm. So one is Tal, which is the smallest unit of time. And therefore he's, if you go back into the classical music and dance, it is a counting of rhythm. It's called Talam. So it is a possible, yeah, why Tal is associated because as I said, he's a deity who looks in the past, the present and the future. And therefore he's someone who could be counting the smallest unit of time. And also not if they get his elder brother Skal Bhairav. So to do with time. One. Two is Vilayati. Vilayati also means coming from the word Vail, which means counting time. Again. So both of these are talking about the time. And therefore, it's not surprising why he is somebody who is worshipped by Tantrics also, because the Tantrics were uh, also one of the people who want to look into time, the future, one, who want to go into the past and change the past possibly, or someone who want to change the Kal Chakra, or someone who want to postpone or deal with death. So there's no wonder that there's so much of time associated with this deity and the people who worship it are also to play with the idea of time. The iconography of Vital is something I'll discuss. And this is a, <coughs> a, a, a okay, we'll discuss the iconography of, of, of Vital. Mm, okay. But before I come to iconography, I want to talk about how is he worshipped. So Vetal, this is a statue in sculpture Amona in Goa. How is he worshipped? He's worshipped one in in sickness when somebody is sick uh, is is going through some kind of a disease, then he is worshipped. A votive offering is made to him of a rooster uh, or a goat also at times. A rooster, a cock is very common that is offered to him. The blood of the rooster or the blood of the goat is, is something that is served to him as a bhog. And it is, uh, most often it is also, be, he, his mouth is, spear, is smeared with that blood. And sometimes the blood is also mixed with, with morsels of rice and it is you know, put onto his face. So after that, on his mouth, and then the carcass is taken away and eaten by people. They're distributed as, as prasad. <coughs> uh, is there a special priest required to do this? No, that's a very interesting part about Vetal worship. So uh, uh, Vetal does not have, uh, 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 
uh, Vital does not have a special uh, priest required where who needs to do all these rituals for you. Generally, anybody can go into the temple and or into or to, at, at the shrine <clears throat> and you can offer whatever you have to offer. You can, uh, no priest is required and you can speak in vernac your vernacular language to your deity. So generally people speak in Konkani only and they tell and they tell Vetal the prayer. The prayer is in the form of Garani. Garani, some of you Maharashtrians, so or, or maybe if you're, if you're coming, the coastal Maharashtra would know. Garani is something like, you know, like you say, oh God, oh God Vetal, this, uh, my, but this has happened to my child. He's not, he's not able to consume food. So he's fallen sick. Why has thou afflicted my body? Please restore him, oh God. And I give, I offer to you this rooster who said in that rhythm. And that is how a, a normal Garani is, is recited. And it's, it's a normal way of saying it, you know, like, thank God for giving us this. It's sort of saying that. And that is a garani, which is recited to him, and you don't need a special priest for, for this. Uh, this is Amona Temple in Goa, of which I showed you the <coughs> statue. Um, how to worship him? All right. The other thing about uh, Vital is also that he's a gram daiva. He's a he's a he's a deity of the village. He protects the village, and uh, at night he keeps a vigil. So all night he is roaming around the village or the property. One of the reasons why in villages you're forbidden from going venturing out late in the night because Vital is protecting. <clears throat> and it's it's terrifying to see the sight of Vita. Also, it is believed that because he walks so much in the night, his saddles get worn out. So there are temples in um, in Shiroda, in Asagao, in Savantwadi, uh, especially in Savantwadi, even in Goa, in Kan in the Poingani village in Goa specifically, but in Savantwadi, in Shiroda and Asagao, uh, what they do is they offer Kolapuri chapel or chapel made of leather to him. So uh, uh, these chapels are offered to him in the sense outside the temples, people come and tie up or people come and put the chapels in a row. So there are like hundreds and hundreds of chapels that are given to him because uh, his chapels get worn out by, by moving out in the night time. <clears throat> what are the qualities of uh, Vital? Yeah, I've discussed this. He resides in the twilight zone. He has wisdom. He can move into the past, present, and future, and therefore he can go into your heart and he can know what kind of a human being you are, and he's free of duality. So as I said, I'll come back to the notion of free of duality. He is not somebody who is either good or bad because good and bad does not exist for Vita. So there's no nothing like good and bad. So therefore he's beyond the duality of good and evil. Uh, how do we locate uh, the timeline? Uh, locating the timeline, uh, we will come to a little later. I will come to, okay, we locate the timeline right now. Okay, how do we locate the timeline? So one is uh, <coughs> how of, I mean, what is, how is has he been worshipped? Now one is uh, the deity is worshipped by the Austrian Gaura tribes who are the Goa's earlier settlers, the original Goenkas, uh, the Gauda tribes, the Gaudas and the Wilips, the tribals. One is them. Later, he was also embraced by the Nath Panthis, who flourished in Goa in the 10th century to 13th century, which is Gorakshanath. And all of these Nath Panthis flourished in Goa in this 12th to 13th, 10th to 13th century. And they embraced also Vetar. So later, in, in 1200 AD, AD <coughs> or CE, Vital got um, incorporated in the Brahmanical pantheon, which is even he became the part of the Brahmanical temples, like a Parivar Devat, or uh, he became the god in the Panchayatan. So among the five gods, he was one of them. So in this way, Vitals was worshipped by the Brahmins and the non-Brahmins. Was there a, a, a difference in, the, in this Vital of the Brahmins 
and the non-Brahmins. Something interesting, which I probably will come in, 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 oh, we'll do it right away. So the Brahmin Vetal and the tribal Vetal. <coughs> Are there differences in this, uh, in these two kinds of Vetal? Because the Brahmins were vegetarian, as you know, the, and if they ate also, they ate, if they ate, they ate fish. They did not eat chicken or goat or, or, or buffalo. But uh, the tribal were eating poultry, goat, buffalo, all of these meat. And this meat was also offered to Betal in the, in the temples. So what happened? How are these now? How are these two different castes going to work out with Vital? So it's so interesting that um, when Vital was becoming slowly incorporated into the Brahmanical form of worship, <coughs> his iconographic features did change slightly. Yes, it did change slightly. Uh, and uh, how did it change is something I will discuss. To, with, with you all now. Uh, if you look at this particular DT at Alorna, this particular sculpture of uh, Veta, you can see the peace on his face. His eyes are closed. He has got these mustache and he has got a very V-shaped, beautiful uh, beard. That's him, very peaceful, calm and serene. Even though he holds a sword, it does in fields of rushes. That is the Brahmin Vital, more or less, as okay, as compared to the left hand side, the, the tribal Vital. So the tribal Vital does not have mustache, neither does he have beard. Uh, he has bulging eyes, which bulge out, and he has extraordinarily long genitals. Both the Vitals have long genitals, but there's a difference that uh, the Brahmins have start, have no, they did start covering Vital with a dhoti, with a white dhoti, which you would not find in the tribal Vital. So tribal Vitals are always naked, stark, ferocious, with fangs. You will see that the fangs were slowly gone missing with Vital. With Vital sculpture, the fangs which you see on the left hand side at the Netrauli statue of <coughs> Vital has gone missing with the Alor Nava. So the fangs got missing, mustache came, beard came, which are more signs of uh, the Sanskritized way of worshipping uh, uh, Vita. It's so interesting how this change has taken place. The change did not take took place with the Shastras or with the iconographic Shastras that they were carrying, but it happened with this. And yeah, uh, there is also Mukut sometimes that got, you know, nice Mukut like a king, which you can see on the right hand side. The kind of mukut that came with the with the uh, Brahmanical. Uh, now this is the temple at Netravli, which is a statue I showed to you. The very tribal animistic Veda. This one, and earlier you saw a picture of the other temples also, which are very grand. I won't say grand, very grand, but they're somewhat grand. <clears throat> In the earlier days, actually Vetal did not have roof. Vital did not have temples. Vitals were roofless. And Vitals were roofless because uh, the people did not live in, uh, in, in permanent settling. A lot of these people practice uh, slash burn methods of agriculture. You know, they used to burn up the forest and they used to then start farming. So it was in that kind of a semi-nomadic age when the worship of Vital had begun with the Austric tribes. And since the people did not have roofs to cover themselves, even their God did not have roof to cover himself, is one, is one. And uh, <coughs> two is, uh, um, uh, two is that, um, um, the other part about Vital is that Vital was a deity, who was a village protector. He would roam in the night. So he's not a static deity who lives in one place. He moves around. And since he moves around, he does not need a roof. 
uh, uh, to your surprise, there are still some sites in Vital, very few. There are still some sites in Vital which do not have a roof yet in Goa. They are just out in open, in wilderness. I will come to one of them, which is my favorite, and I'm keeping it to the last. It is quite uh, absolutely stunning work <coughs> from the Shilara period. <clears throat> anyway, I, I will take up the few questions right now just to solve your doubts also, which I think are interesting questions. Are Vetoba, Aravli and Vital uh, the same? Yes. Vetoba is called, you know, in a very sweeter way, like Azoba, Vetoba. So Vetoba and Vital are one and the same. Uh, the other word for it would also be Vetrapani, which comes in the Vital Shahastra Naman. And Vetrapani means somebody who holds Vetachi Kati. The Veta Chikati. So it's cane, a cane. So but 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 there is no iconography of of Vetal with Veta Chikati. Though it is mentioned in the Vetal Shastranam, but it is not been there existing. Also, Vetal Shastranaman came to be written pretty late. The the animistic Vetal sculptures and worshipping of Vetal was existing already before <coughs> that. Which other parts of India worship Vital? Vitals are worshipped in different parts of India, like Gujarat, Maharashtra, Assam as a big uh, temple. But nowhere in India is there a temple which worships, which has Vital as the presiding deity. Vital is a subsidiary deity, you know. Like in Assam, there is a good Vital's uh, temple, but the the, tem the temple is of Chamundeshwari. And Vital is a subsidiary deity. Similarly, in Python and similarly in other places. Only Goa is a place where you will find in India Vital as the main deity of temples also. <clears throat> Would you explain the tradition of Kolapri chapels in Aravli, Shiroda, etc.? If it was since that he was patrolling as a protector, why only in these four villages? Uh, yes. So, um, uh, see, for every, like I said, no, earlier, Vital has different roles to play. In, there are certain villages for whom Vital was a, mainly a village deity who protects the village. So the places where he is the village deity and protects the village, there Kolapuri chapels came to be offered to him. <clears throat> In other places, Vital was also serving as a deity of curing you from sickness or blessing you in some other ways. So in those places, Vital received some other forms of offering like rooster and so forth. That's one of the reasons. The other places, there are a few places also where um, clay statues of, of, of horses are offered to Vital. And that was one of the topic I think I missed. It, no, I didn't miss, I thought I would take it somewhere. Okay, now why clay statues of or terracotta? The better word to use. Terracotta statues of horses, which you would have seen in many parts in India, these terracotta horses are offered. I saw a lot of this in Madhya Pradesh, offered to different gods and goddesses. <clears throat> now, the terracotta horse, because um, nowhere it is there in the sculpture that a horse is present in Vital's iconography in sculpture. Nowhere it is mentioned that the horse is the Vahan of Vetal, except again for Vetal Shahastranaman. The Vetal Shahastranaman does mention that uh, uh, Vetal likes green horse. So uh, that is one in Vetal Shahastranaman. Two, that Chamars, the, ch the Chamars do believe that Vetal's Vahan is horse. Again, a folklore. Writ writing, lit written literature, uh, Vital Shrasanamban mentions horse, but all the other written, not written, iconographic literature, which is iconography, <coughs> there are normally dog. A dog is somewhere there in some of the statues. I'll show you somewhere. A dog is normally there and dog is mentioned as the Vahan of Vetal, even in Kalika Pura. So, <clears throat> largely it is dog, <clears throat> is one thing. And two is also that, uh, uh, two, one is that, two is 
um, his elder brother Bhairava's mount is also Vahan, is also dog. So the possibility is not uh, surprising that the elder brother, who is also god of the Kal Bhairava's god of time, also rides on a horse, and even the brother uh, uh, Veta could ride on a horse. Sorry, on a dog. On a dog. So the dog is the is the is the Vahan mentioned, <coughs> and uh, yeah. So that is uh, about the Vahan. Um, Okay, I was talking about the Brahmin Vetal and the uh, 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 the, the, the animistic Vetal. I'll, I'll show you a little more pictures. This is of Alorna again, you know how he's decorated different types. This is with Aboli flowers that he's been uh, decorated. And the other time for festive occasion, you know, this is very similar to, to being dressed as a Vithal. So this is a very Brahmanical way of, of worshipping. <coughs> Vetar. Uh, and this is an absolute Brahmanical way of, of worshipping Vetar. This is a very big temple in Bicholi uh, in Goa. And um, yeah, why such a widespread of, of, of the worship of, of Vetar in the why such a widespread of the worship of Vetar? Okay, one is we need to understand it is to do with the rise of Kapali Kalas, Pashupatas, and Nath Pantis. Kapali Kalas, Pashupatas, and Nath Pantis are these three communities who were the uh, Shakti worshippers. Were, no, more than Shakti worshippers, they were people who believed in Shiva, who believed in a sort of a tantric. Uh, <coughs> again, the word is not tantricism here because in Goa, Tantra is, Tantricism is absent. Vital is present, but Tantricism is absent. There is no, uh, there is no Tantric mantras recited. There are no Tantrics present who is doing Vital Vidya or in crematorium grounds or in these temples. Absolutely no. So that's very interesting that the, the Tantricism does not exist. The Shaivism does. <laughs> the rise of these three communities around the 12th century in Goa could be one of the reasons for the worshipping of Vita because these three communities largely worship Goa, or largely worship Vita, largely because these three communities wanted the blessings of Vita for different reasons. It is also mentioned in different literature that how these three, especially Pashupatas, uh, uh, to receive blessings from Vetar, they used to offer him several things and worship him. The second reason could be <coughs> Vetar is the destroyer of storms and therefore he is a protector of trade and commerce. Goa, going back, it could be Gumantaka, going back, Govpuri, Goa Vela, Ella. These are different names of Goa in different periods, right? From the Sasaitians to the to the uh, to the Shilaras, Kadambas, right till then, you know that whole spread across of so many centuries. Uh, it has gone to different phases, but what remains is Goa was a port of international trade and commerce. And I don't know how many of you know, <clears throat> but at a point of time, it was also known as the Lisbon of the East when the Portuguese flourished in the 15th century. But, 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 it was an international trade center and therefore one needed better seas for transportation. And one of the reasons possibly also the Shilaras and the Kadambas could have worshiped Vetal because he was a protector of and a promoter of trade and commerce, which could have <coughs> happened between the third to the fifth century that is about 1600 years from now, 1600 to 1500 years from now. Um, so these could be different reasons why Vital could be worshipped by these different communities. And then of course we come to the incorporation of him into the Brahmanical uh, way in the 1280. So these are different uh, ways which possibly could be responsible 
for spreading the 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 cult of of betar in in goa i'll take you through this particular temple bicholim in goa if you can see the 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 work the brass work on both the sides and the betar standing tall i showed you a lot of statues some of you may be wondering what must be these dimensions <coughs> roughly mostly statues which all i showed you so far should be i think uh, one and a half meter in height in height it it should be that much uh, this is the proper structure from the outside this this that was the close up from the sanctum the uh, sorry 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 uh, <laughs> yeah uh, so sorry this is the one i was showing to you from bicholi so this is the in from inside and this is a little bit from outside from the outside this sanctum and uh, yeah this is me conversing with with the with the with the priest and trying to understand as much as for both the different kinds of priests the brahmin priests and the gurus or or other uh um um the zalmis or the <coughs> or the gaudas the other priest which were the animist tribal priest uh, had a very interesting things to say and the brahmin priest has very interesting things to say little different but very interesting at the same little different slightly different though. so like yeah the brahmin priest were little skeptical in in conversing but i think after a point when they get comfortable like like your like after some point he allowed me inside and he let me uh, capture with uh, like then he got more friendlier so he showed me uh, this is the the utsav whenever there is a festival you know some of some of the times you saw this brass face this is the brass face which is then put on the same vitar for certain celebration on certain festivals i will show you the <coughs> picture when the brass face is put how does it look this is how it looks with the, with the brass face so that's why some pictures you saw were with brass face so it depends on which day you go though <coughs> the 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 kalika puran mentions that vital should be worshiped on tuesdays but uh, the they are they are worshiped at different times also but in the sanskritic tradition yes on 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 tuesdays okay i need to come back to this one slide which is yeah what are the references in literature this is another one from amona <laughs> the references in literature uh, come from kalika puran sayadri khanda and mahabharat these are three places where you will find vital that is mentioned in the in the in the literature now um, puranas do agree a lot of puranas do agree that vitals are associated with rakshasas demons pisachas ghosts shakinis a kind of spirit yakha yakshas bhutas uh, brahma rakshasas and gandharvas and kinnas <coughs> so vitals are associated with all of these in the mahabharat uh it is in the in the shal parva of mahabharat and it's specifically one written by narasimha narayana it is mentioned that the vitalas were fighting on the kurukshetra with the pandavas against the kauravas and uh, uh shakuni performed a yagna sitting stark naked in a cemetery which is known as the narasimha sadhana and in this particular sadhana there were dakinis yakshinis bhairavas shetrapals and vetalas who were all around him in this yagna and shakuni provided them with feast of blood and liquor so liquor <laughs> liquor <laughs> so vetals were also in the army of chamunda when she went to anhilie chanda and munda uh in kalika puran they are mentioned that is kalika puran could be written somewhere around 17 to 11th century and they also mention in kashi khanda 
of uh, the Sayadri Khanda Puran, which is roughly 5th to 13th century. <coughs> All these are places where Vitals has been mentioned as far as writing is, is concerned. But I did also take you, uh, take you on a folk narratives of the animistic Vetar, along with the, the, the written Vetar. This is the Ajyo Vetar, which is in Asgao Malvarn. Now, in this particular statue, if you look carefully, he's not holding a pot, he's holding a fire. This is the only temple where Vetal holds a fire in his hand. So, he's known as a fire holding Vetal. Uh, again, possibility, as I said, you know, Vital was born from that semen which was very fiery and very potent and very powerful. And goddess fire could not also take it up and therefore it was chopped into Ganga. So the association with the fire is very strong with, with Vital. This is a picture I clicked in Savol Day. <coughs> in, uh, why I'm sharing this particular picture with you? Now, these were the, the, this is made of wood. This is a made of Safa, Safa's wood. So in the earlier days, the statues were not made of basalt rock or basalt stone. They were made up of either Safa wood, either Arjun wood. In fact, it is believed that Arjun uh, tree is the, is the abode of, of, uh, of Vetar also. So <coughs> this particular one is a Savolding. Uh, it is like that in a small pit. And the height would be around, uh, I think, three feet. I'll show you a close-up of you of this. This is how it looks. This is a three-feet statue of Vita, which is now, of course, uh, being uh, facing the ravages of time. A lot of these statues initially were made of wood and very soon, um, very soon means now most of them do not survive. So what they have done, you know, in some places, they have given a samadhi to the older statue of wood and they created newer statue of basalt rock. The one that I showed you that with, with, with our temple, with, uh, with the Brahmin priest right now, with that mask, that is also a place where there was originally an old wooden statue and I asked him where it is. So opposite to that temple, they have put a samadhi of that uh, uh, they have buried it and they have made a samadhi for that old, uh, temp, uh, old vital of wood. So the earlier statues were made from wood. This is the very famous one at Poingani, <coughs> where the famous Redenchi Jatra, which is a festival dedicated to vital, happens once in three years. I won't be going into the festival because I would just deal with vital as it is uh, now, um, this is, I also wanted to show you, you know, how it is also facing the ravages of time, especially these animistic ones, which have a simple thatched roofs and uh, simple temples, just shrines. And they're also, you know, facing the ravages, like this particular one is quite deteriorated with, with time. This one was located in a sacred grove in, in Vitsundre. So, and it was quite difficult for me to locate this one because it was just a small, very small shrine. You can see the, <coughs> the thatch roof and the background, very small shrine and in minimal lighting. You know, these are difficult places to, to shoot uh, or to click pictures. And of course, I had gone in a time when I did not even have a great camera, which I regret today. I wish I had. So... Anyway, and now it's very difficult to go again. Okay. Um, I finally come to uh, my closing, which is uh, the, uh, I mean, closing to take more 10 minutes. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I wanted to do the iconography with her, which I'll do right now while I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this. So, <clears throat> how do we locate the sites of uh, of, of Vital. Where are these Vitals? Uh, so in the earlier days, you know, as I mentioned, they did not have a roof. They were just roofless. So where were they? Where were they? Um, where was Vitals located? I don't know how many of you are aware of the concept called Devrai. Devrai means sacred groves. 
sacred grove which are dedicated or left to uh, wilderness and no people go there <coughs> unless they have to find uh, plants for medicinal purposes or they have to worship the deity otherwise you don't venture just for time pass or just for anything so these are sacred groves this is a picture of a sacred grove at maushi which you can see how will you know it's a sacred grove well you will not come to know <laughs> <laughs> you just can't know you would be just around it and you'll be asking people where is a sacred grove and where is a devrai where is a devrai and none of them will answer you that you are actually in the devrai this is the devrai because there are no borders there are no fences <coughs> the fencing is social fencing which is people just know the old people the older generation so this is maushi a village where uh, the sacred grove is there how many sacred groves are there in goa uh about uh, uh, uh i think around 90 90 there are 90 sacred groves in goa and unfortunately a lot of them are deteriorating with the sick 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 absolutely sick mining happening in these villages and uh, it just it just disastrous to believe what is happening so sometimes i just feel sad when i look even what's happening in molem right now it's sick that they want to uh the rani's want to overtake it it's just horrible but anyway <coughs> we will come back to uh, the sacred groves this is a sacred grove and in these sacred groves you know the deities are just scattered like in open air and uh, from far away you might not see them sometimes if you take a closer look and therefore i did this i took these pictures from a distance so if you see from let this is there is a vital in just in open air and if you go more close to him then you will see oh it's really a uh, avatar oh yes it is a avatar and then if you absolutely go close to him there is a beautiful avatar revealed to you this must be about um, i think 2 feet this is a 2 feet beautiful this is one of my favorite avatar sculptures because it's just in open and it's just there with with moss and everything and it, it's just there <laughs> so you can see the condition of this this and this is roofless it is just going to be as it is so uh, i think we can look at it and and discuss the iconography so usually vitars are usually they are naked yes they are naked <coughs> they don't have a covering they have two hands yes uh, on both these arms uh, they would be wearing armlets with with nagas on it uh and nagas are both the sides on the armlets which is something you will again see with vetal they are the genital or the penis is extremely or it's quite long as as compared to the the body uh, which is one of the reasons why the god is at times the deities at time associated uh with uh, fertility rites also because of its presence of a of the phallus Uh, though i don't think phallus could be a word for it but you could probably use a word penis for it uh that's one uh two is it's got long ears and there are kundalas the vital ways kundalas and in most of the animistic statues animistic one the tribal ones you will usually see the ear are torn with wearing the kundalas because the kundalas are extremely big which i'll show you in the other uh uh Uh, picture also there are <coughs> bells uh, normally at the girdle which you will see either on both the sides or either on one side there are there are bells also other than this the vetals uh, some have bulging eyes some do not have but most of them have bulging eyes the body is graceful it's got a curve it's got a long uh, necklace of skulls which the vetal bears a long necklace of skulls known as the runda mala um yeah yeah all these statues are this runda mala which you can see it goes all around from the neck and it goes right till the knee caps so yeah like you it is that's one thing it wears some of them wear a bell girdle totally uh it has fangs in the earlier statues the later the fangs have gone missing 
as I said, the ears are extremely long. It holds a sword in one hand and it holds a pot to hold wine in the other hand. Uh, yeah, here you can see the kundalas very well described. Ah, this statue I want to look a little carefully because it is only in this statue you see something which has gone missing in some uh, uh, statues in some sculptures that is uh, here no at the on this belly you can see small scorpion so some of these statues have a scorpion on the belly some of them and it's quite a prominent thing uh, in the in the sculptures of Vitar. they have got a scorpion on the belly not all but here yeah, you can see where better so here there's a scorpion on the belly Um, other than this about iconography of Vitar, the legs are cylindrical as you can see most of them. Uh, I wish they didn't clothe them so much because it's then difficult to look at the iconography. But yeah, I am definitely going to show you the, the, the last one in which the iconography is very, very detailed. But of course, it's a it's altogether different uh, sculpture also, the last one, which is at Loli. Okay, this is me, uh, and this is just to give you, you know, these are different deities which are just spread across in this grove at Maoshi. And it's a very, very peaceful, quiet village. I think uh, even when I was there, probably there was nobody around. There was nobody around. Then somebody saw me and came to see <laughs> because there was nobody around. It's a very, very small village. Okay, here I come to the last part of uh, one of the reasons why there were Nagas is this could be also that because Vital is Patal Vasi and Patal is neither uh, heaven, neither hell, something in between. The neither space where Shitlai goes. So the neither space, he's in a neither space, he's in the threshold of, of light and darkness, of twilight. Uh, and Patal is places where snakes, Nagas live. So one of the reasons why Nagas could be he, as, as Angudas that he would be wearing. One of the reasons. <coughs> um, I come to the last part, which is my last destination and the extreme south part of Goa called Lole. And Lole is this place where there is this Arya Durga Devi Mandir uh, in Lole. This is the entrance of it. And I'm going to give actually a very visual tour to you. This is how you enter into this place. And you see a house on the left side and a house on the right. When you enter later, you realize, oh, this is actually a house, house, house. Where is the temple? Oh, the temple is behind the house. <laughs> so the temple is behind the house. And uh, you have to, I mean, I went in the monsoon season, which is a very beautiful season to visit this place also. Uh, so you have to walk in um, ankle deep mud and slush, which is a typical Goa. I mean, typical Kokan. There's nothing new in that. And uh, uh, you come to this statue in open air. It just in open air and this particular sculpture of Vetar and you're like, you just look at yourself and you feel insignificantly small and you can feel quite, um, I don't know how to describe this feeling, this feeling of lost wilderness and this extremely terrifying Vetar right in front of you who could uh, probably just gobble you up. So, yeah, there were four pillars over here, which I read, but now the pillars are not there anymore when I had gone. Uh, and uh, this is the, the, the statue of Vital, which you can see here with the fangs, with rib cage and emancipated belly. This is the only statue in India, which is in the Tribhanga pose. When I say Tribhanga pose, it's curvaceous. And the feet is one is straight and one is, you know, pointing to the right. All the Vital statues are straight. You know, both the ankles and the feet are straight. This is the only one in the Tribhanga pose. And you have got the, the, <coughs> the extremely uh, emancipated belly, the, the rib cage, the, ex the, the long genitals, uh, the one hand to hold the talwar, the other hand for the 
patra to hold the blood uh, and 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 something which you will only see in this particular statue in all over india and nowhere else this is a very unique statue of of vital is you will see uh, in the close up okay that is just to give you a uh, a scale i thought the scale would be important so it's tiny me in front of the vital <laughs> and it's, yeah i mean okay yeah this is uh, if you look carefully um the rib cage and the thal uh, the right hand sorry the left hand which is i think the next page yeah <clears throat> in the yeah here 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 you see that there is a goat being held in this goat is only unique to the statue where he holds a goat in his hand along with the patra so which you will only see it uh, in this particular uh, statue at lole which is made of basalt rock and it is believed that <coughs> it belongs to the 17th century so and it is right there and you can see there is this thread hanging maybe uh, the thread is a way you know people there there was a lot of things around there was thread there was oil there was liquor because people also offer liquor people also come here and offer blood sacrifices of animals coconuts agarbattis uh, very very common very very this is uh, i was speaking to you about the terrifying uh, protruding eyeballs and uh, the jaws with uh, with uh, the fangs and the extremely long kundalas also one thing before i miss this is the only statue of vital just got the 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 prabhavali which is the halo there is no halo in other statues of vital as you as we saw so this is a very unique statue of a sculpture of vital in in lole and okay there are some places in in i'm come to the last slide there are some places where vital is worshiped as twin vital <coughs> it's not the twin vital but what i read somewhere was you know that uh, these are two forms of vital but the iconography is extremely similar not exclusive it's the same iconography so it's difficult to believe that these are two different forms of vital but only that one statue could be little small one could be little big possibly sometimes it could be same but what i read was you know at places where sometimes there used to be you know competitions so when two people were asked to make vital statues two people would make and one of you know there would and the one which is the best statue would be chosen to be put into the temple but very often both the statues are extremely beautiful in cases in pale and bondla so in this cases both the statues are then venerate of oh, sorry venerated or both the sculptures comes to be worship <clears throat> so which is a case with pale and bondla in few other places not very common but few other places where the twin vetals are also worshiped in go i think that's interesting that you know they were not able to select what is the best one so this is in mulgaon in goa uh, remember mulgaon some of you have we spoke about kelbai this is yeah this is around there okay i have taken this picture specifically for your this this is the samadhi of the old statues of vital this is the new in the stone the old were were in the wood so they put the wood statues bury them and they create a gumat or like that a samadhi where the old wooden statues are, are buried and uh, i think uh, yeah i reached the end with this i blinking which is uh, i think the question answer time so here i so those eyes were blinking in wonderment at this <laughs> rambling tour that you took us across to goa so let's look at the questions now omkar yeah uh you mentioned vetals in plural many times so pranav wants to know are there many vetals or just one vetal good question pranav or uh, there are many vetals generally it's considered there are 64 kinds of vetals as per the vetal shastra namat so there are many forms of vetal and vetal will and therefore uh, when vetal vidya is performed which is a a a, a right you perform in a in a crematorium ground or in an isolated forest the vetal is supposed to come and you know uh, look over the rites 
so <clears throat> it is believed that he never comes in his real form he comes in different forms so therefore vetal is a plural he could be in zillion forms okay um so are uh, is there any relative so to speak of vetal closer home is he related to belboot of the ulhas river basin dr uh, uh, pranav wants to know uh dr pranav i don't think not doctor sorry i was mistaken <laughs> okay pranav uh, i don't think he would be related to uh, the whale booth of ulhas river basin i doubt there could be possibility but i don't know much but if i see possibly a icon of it i think with with the iconography i can just try to make sense but the whale booth word is interesting because whale booth would be again a dt of time so that is an interesting word. so that is one connection with uh, yeah. our yeah. friend vetal yes. so now a question from a real doctor uh, ashish kelkar wants to know are skulls associated in iconography of bhairav or kapalika as and not with vetal uh skulls are associated with the uh, vetals skulls are okay. associated with vetals but don't be surprised that you see skulls with these other host of gods also because all of them almost belong to same realms in mm -hmm. fact iconography is also very close because bhairava also wears a garland of rundamala i mean he also wears uh, a garland of skulls in fact i myself actually had to go and click bhairav pictures and vetar pictures and look at them simultaneously compare them okay umkar what is different and the main difference was bhairav had a trident and a damru which was missing from vetar so otherwise because bhairav's other two hands also holds a talwar a sword and the patra so then i get it becomes confusing but the moment you see the damru and the trident you are sorted okay this is vital and other thing is also bhairav is naked he is also naked so how is vital different from shetrapal rakhandar and ravinath <laughs> and ravalnath sorry ravalnath uh, extremely different um with all of these you can say uh uh he is the chief of all of them i don't know if i can say he is the chief of ravana but he is a chief of rakhandar and shetrapal that you can say because shetrapal and she and the rakhandar will come under him because okay. these are other spirits or you can say pishach the word though unfortunately the word pishach is a very negative connotation for us civilized people but uh, pishach would just mean animistic spirit deities and rakhandar is somebody who takes care of yeah. your 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 property your shetrapal okay. is somebody who takes usually care of a, a community property and vital would be somebody who takes care of the village so you know it's like this like this we go so yeah ravalnath is very very famous in in goa but ravalnath is a form considered closer to shiva okay ravalnath is also obscured in mystery you know ravalnath will be another lecture even i would might have myself have to do a lot of research because from so many years i've been looking for the cool swamini of ravalnath and i have not been able to because there is such a big confusion so uh, it's it's another topic to explore in itself <coughs> okay um staying with the questions just a minute yes um, um so is he related to the to betoba of aravli yes 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 it's the same absolutely the same? same yes okay so that answers ashish's question bharat wants to know if there is a vital takri in pune and uh, he was wondering if that's got anything to do with vital worship yes yes is the same vital over there in fact i mentioned that the vetal takri is worship as the god of cow protector of cows okay. so and what and are the vetal temples spread out yes uh, bargo the vetal temples are spread out but only what is significant is how they spread out in goa 
like as i said there are 45 to 50 sites of vital in goa and all over india the recorded sites would be only 10 to 15 of sculptural vital and that makes goa like the hub of vital <laughs> so um Arundhati says there's a Vetal temple in Verli village. Would that yes. be the same? Yes, 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 yes. But I think the Verli village one is an iconic one. And in fact, you will find Vetals around uh, wherever uh, Verli has a very interesting temples. In fact, one day Khaki could do a tour over there. Uh, Verli has an interesting host of uh, temples of this. Uh, 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 there are these seven sisters of mom of you can't seven sisters of Mumbai, but in a way, yes. So you will have these uh, 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 <coughs> sad asras, seven asras. So there are all of these asras are there at go at Verli, and um, you look into those temples also because these are pre-modern temples of of goddesses in Bombay, uh, which you will find in Matunga, the Satasra temple. You will find in Mahim, the Shitla Devi temple, and you will find in Verli these again goddesses, which which largely deal with uh, plagues, epidemics. And uh, all of these goddesses, like Sitna Mata deals with goddess of chicken pox. The, the, the Manmala deals with smallpox. So this is very interesting history of Bombay again, which, is, uh, which, which, has, which has got to do with these other goddesses other than the Mumbadev. So we're going to cover them in a future talk in January. Uh, so exactly. keep watching. Uh, we talked about uh, Veer Badra connection. No, no, we didn't do the Badra connection. I think I'll, I can take that question. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's like this. All idols have only two hands, unlike Veer Badra and Bhairav, which have multiple hands. Why is that? Uh, I, I think it becomes easier for us to separate them <laughs> as, uh, as different deities. But why does uh, Veer Badra and um, uh, Bhairava has four hands? I think this could be to do with the description of these gods. Again, the description of Vetal in written literature in Vetal Shastranaman is four hands. But nowhere there are four hands. Possibly, I think what has happened is the, the worshipping of Vetal is so animistic and so tribal that it predates the written literature of the Sanskritic tradition. And therefore, the Sanskrit tradition gave it four hands, like its other deities. But Vetal was existing prior to that. So that could be one of the reasons. So do you th I'm just thinking as you spoke, uh, did the sans Sanskrit traditions try to imbibe him with some kind of godly qualities? Uh... By adding on these hands? The Sanskrit tradition bring, brought a lot of change to Veta. Like from being a naked, he became a clothed. From yeah. non vegetarian, he also became vegetarian. Mm. Yeah. There are uh, temples of Veta in Goa. So okay. there are. The one which I showed you with that pundit, that's a vegetarian temple. So he did go undergo uh, a big change. Uh, did the Bra did the Brahmins replace the Gurovs and the Vilips and the Gauda priest? No, they did not. Because it's very interesting. There are temples <coughs> where everything is Brahminized. And outside the temple, there is a stone where the Gauda tribe would come or the Vilip and they would do their Garanes and they would uh, uh, sacrifice the goat or the rooster, offer the blood outside and again come and pray to that Vita. So it's very oh. interesting syncretism because the Brahmin priest cannot um, cannot uh, take care of that uh, sacrifices. So you need that vernacular language, the vernacular tribal people who come and do it. I'm using the word tribal, they're not really tribal tribal, but they belong to, they come down from the <coughs> tribal communities. Neha wants to know where she can see the clay horse offerings. Are they made in Goa too? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, in fact, clay horse you could also see in uh, in Savantwadi. You could also see it in Savantwadi if you don't want to go all the way to uh, Goa. And if you want to go to Goa, then the Poingani Temple in Kankon is the one which uh, has clay horse offering. Uh, 
I actually what happened was uh, <laughs> I have brought one at home just like that, but I've kept it up on my attic. <laughs> I thought I would remove it, but then I didn't have time. But yeah. <laughs> says that he has a Dwarpal image from the from a Hoysat and all the characteristics that you described, but he's holding a head hanging in his hand. So is that Vetal? Uh, you just saw a, no, wait, wait, wait. Hanging head, head is also sometimes with, um, with Bhairav also. So okay. it is, it is, is it a human head or is it animal head? Abhay, would you want to type that out? If you're around. <laughs> Human head, he says. Human head. It's difficult to believe then it could be Vetal. It could be some of the other deities. Okay. It could be. But I would, if I, I don't mind if you want to share it later, I would love to see it. Ashish Kelkar says that uh, the Vetal villages have musical connections also. And he's talking about uh, uh, Amona uh, gave birth to Kishori Amonkar, Mulgaon to Suhasini Mulgaonkar, yes. Keri to Kesar by Kerkar. So is that some kind of connection which needs to be explored? I don't know if it's with Vetal Farooq, but this could be uh, and to definitely like what uh, Ashish is talking is something which is a very important topic. How these villages have produced these great musicians is something which can be a separate topic. I, it has no connection to Vetal, but I think it could have connection to the geography. The space makes a huge difference. Goa is a very small state, but it has produced innumerable musicians as well as visual artists. And so, today, Arun, that Sorry, sorry. As a cosmopolitan space, right from Mira Nair to Oran Pamuk, everybody has some place in Goa to live. <laughs> so something for, including Aparna Sen. So something for us to all of us to think. <laughs> Arundhati, uh, the last question from Arundhati is that uh, in the Devrais, is yeah. the Vetal, I, I'm, I'm not sure I follow it. Is the Vetal idol idol there alongside a goddess? So she's asking, is there a goddess alongside the Vetal idol? Okay. No, no, no. Wait, I'll tell you. So these are different gods, goddesses scattered. So if one is here, other will be five feet away. Other okay. will be five feet away. So in that particular group which I showed you, there must be around seven, eight god goddesses, one of them being Vetal. <coughs> And this is the common site, not just in Maushi. These are sacred groves. You will find them in Netravli, in Vitsundrim, in Kerim, all of these places. You know, as we were talking, uh, you never mentioned whether uh, Vetal had or has a consort or not, unlike other. Uh, yeah, you know, this is the this is the question which I have been looking with Rawal Nath, <laughs> but uh, with Vetal. The consort is not, uh, no, they're the only stories with Kamdenu, which is a written story in Kalika Puran that he marries Kamdenu and they produce a child called Nandi. That is the only one. Otherwise, uh, no, no, no. But he's not celibate. I think, yeah, I think he's a god of celibacy. He's not a householder. So I don't okay. think there's a need for marriage for him because he's not a householder. Uh, so I think that brings us to the end of today's talk. Thank you so much, Omkar. And thank you, everybody, for attending. And thank you for the lovely questions. I certainly got to know a lot more about Goa and this unique aspect. So thanks for that, Omkar. Everybody, see you next year. Have a happy Christmas and a great New Year. <laughs> Bye. Bye.